views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show is coming up right next. The following audio is via a Skype call. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's so great to have all of you tune us in and turn us on. It is amazing, and we've got a great, great show for all of you. I want to make sure that you are tuned in because today what happens is we get to start a complete series with someone that I've had the honor and the pleasure of working with now for several months, and I'm talking about my friend, my colleague, Darcy Pariso, who's joining me here today. Now, for those of you that are like, Darcy, yeah, I know her. That, yeah, you know what we're going to talk about. But she is someone that is not just passionate about spirituality and self-development and all of that. She is someone that lives it, breeds it, and literally brings it to the forefront of every conversation she has with all of you, however that is. You know, she is also someone that completely gets what happens when the angels are speaking and when our animals are speaking. In early 2011, she was introduced to so many things that came through healing as a Reiki master, that came through the energy of what it's like to work with individuals and to work with our fabulous animal friends. So today, you're going to hear about her journey, her life's story, how she can connect you with these fabulous messages, and what she and I have planned for all of you. Darcy, it's great to have you here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, good morning, Dr. Pat, and thank you for the warm welcome. Yeah, Listen, we're going to have some fun today. Uh, the, the show topic is Tell Them Who We Are. And this is about talking about your life, your life journey, how it is that you've come to be so connected to our animal friends, what that means, and how our animals are really wanting to say, listen, people have to know like who we are, why we're here, and what we can do. And this is also kind of fun, too, because you and I have a bunch of really fun stories when it comes to our, you know, uh, four legged, two legged, no, no legged, however they are animal friends. Right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about this for you. Um, Look, you're known as an animal communicator. And since I've gotten to know you over these past couple of months, I know you as that and then some. You know, what is it about your life, the long and winding road, if not, what is it about your life? How did you come to know yourself as this? And how do you explain what that is to folks? You know, I have to say to start that this is truly my life purpose. It's my passion. And I do live and breathe it. (laughs) I truly do. Um, And it's magical. That's one of the things that when the animals came in, I mean, I do work with you know, some difficult situations, but there's also a lot of fun, fun energy, and um, it's just uplifting. So when this all came in with Reiki, um, I couldn't have known what was coming because it started with mediumship, actually. Yeah. And people would be laying on my massage table, 
and I would start to hear things, and then I'd see deceased um, family and friends, and they'd bring messages, and it was so powerful, and things that only they would know. And soon, you know, animals came in, and my friends told me for quite a while, you're an animal communicator, and I didn't see it. So it's the old saying, sometimes we're the last to know. Yeah, we are the last to know. I mean, clearly, I was the last to know uh, to know for myself that, you know, there was this thing that I could do, and that was called talking. And, <laughs> and you know, I never knew myself as that because I'm pretty much shy. I'm quite an introvert. And, you know, part of this is I didn't really understand what it was that people were, were relating with, right? And they weren't really relating to talking. There was something about it. But, you know, what is it from your childhood? Did you grow up with animals? How did you make the connection when you were younger? I did. You know, um, I live in Seattle, which is three hours from Canada, and it was the same but in a different part of the, the um, country. I grew up in Upper Michigan three hours from Thunder Bay, Canada, and we were in the woods. I mean, our playground was the woods. And in that area, as much as 90% of the area is forested. So there were all kinds of rabbits and deer and skunks and bears, and they were all around us. But in addition to that, I had lots of pets, um, dogs, cats, and guinea pigs, and eventually turtles and birds. And so um, I really related to animals, and I didn't understand how empathic I was and how much I was feeling their energy. So over the years, I've had to really work with my own energy because I would pick a lot of things up. So having so, that, yeah, that uh, awareness this, was great. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, this is really kind of cool because we also hear people talk about the fact that they're so connected to their animal friends and so connected to nature and yet, um, you have a very special, unique talent around this. Um, I know I'm connected in a lot of ways to, you know, many things in nature, but I don't really have the kind of talent and gift you have. What was it like the first time for you when you realized, wait a minute, there's more going on here than just being connected? Well, a couple of things. Um, one was when a little dog came in, and then the other was when I learned that I was working with St. Francis, excuse me, St. Francis of Assisi and Archangel Gabriel, and that's when I really understood what was happening. But the little dog story is that um, one day a friend of mine was giving mediumship readings in his home to a group of people, and I'm brushing my teeth in the morning, and this little white fluffy dog shows up in the bathroom, and she wasn't going anywhere. You know, she let me know that she was going to this event and that I was going to be speaking for her. Um, so we get to my friend's house, and she starts showing me images of herself in a life vest, and she's on this beautiful boat out, of, out on the sound with her family, just really enjoying herself. And her message, among other things, was that she really wanted to thank this woman for all that she did to make her feel very special and to give her such a wonderful life. She felt very, very loved. And she told me that her name was Princess. And there was a woman, her friend next to her, was laughing and nudging her. And she was saying, that's your dog, that's your dog. But this woman was saying, well, no, it can't be. Her name's not Princess. The friend was laughing all the harder. And she said, are you kidding? We all called her that. <laughs> and this, this little dog pipes up and she says, well, it said Princess on my bowl. <laughs> <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so it there it began, and you know what fun they brought into my life. Mm. Mm. It's life changing, though, isn't it? And I, I want to talk about that with you because, you know, look, I think we can all remember stories, you know, back as far as we can go, um, and you know things that we've learned. Um, you know, look, you've been out there, you've made agreements as I have, whether it's agreements with my archangel Uriel or agreements with Mother Nature, but we make these agreements slash commitments to serve. And that's one of the things that you have done is you've made this commitment to serve and serve others by helping them heal. You know, what is it? about that at a, at a young age for you, or maybe it's not at a young age, but maybe along the way where you knew 
man, I've got to take some classes. I've got to study because I want to help people. You know, Dr. Pat, um, what's coming to mind at this moment is that, and it's very powerful for me, is that um, I didn't understand how the world worked. Mm. I looked at people and I looked at the situations around me and I, I didn't get it. And when things were difficult for me growing up, because I was so sensitive, I would always hear the same message. And I never questioned it, which is kind of funny in hindsight. <laughs> but I always heard it won't always be this way. Mm. And it gave me such comfort. And I didn't know at that time that it was the angels that were around me. Mm. But wow. even before I got into, um, you know, studying energy and animal communication and me mediumship, any of that, there were lots of things that happened. Um, when my daughters were born or during um, my pregnancy, angels would come in and talk to me and give me messages quite a bit. And I just accepted it as normal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was just kind of my life. And I didn't think about it, but I know it's great yeah. reassurance. <laughs> yeah, I know me too. And then I, and then, you know, like I, I thought it was normal too. Um, until, you know, my family sent me to therapy at a very young age. And, you know, what I love about that story is, you know, even after being shipped off to therapy and the doctor said, Hey, listen, if she's hearing powerful, positive messages, uh, just let her keep hearing them. And, you know, that's what you're doing. You also have heard, and that's why this show today is called Tell Them Who We Are. You also heard that part of what your vision and mission is about is to tell the world. Tell them who we are. We're going to take a short break when we come back. That is a very important agreement to have. That's what Darcy has. When we come back, we're going to talk about tell them who we are. And Darcy's going to share what that phrase meant and how that phrase changed her life and how today she's one of the most sought after folks around about helping us communicate and listen better to our animal friends. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Wow, hey everyone, welcome. Uh, welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. This is Talk Radio to Thrive By. I'm telling you, I got to pinch myself some days because when each of us gets called to do something that we so not thought was in our real house to do for a purpose that's so much greater than us, we get to show up and shine. If you would like to show up and shine on the Dr. Pat Show as a co-host or sponsor, send us an email to inspire at the drpatshow.com. Who's ready to shine in 2018? Hi, I'm Wendy Rose Williams, certified spiritual teacher, past life regressionist, Reiki master, author, and radio host. Want to bring your unique message on air with me as part of the Transformation Talk Radio Network and Soul Wisdom Radio platform? Call 425-502-0362 or visit wendyrosewilliams.com to learn how you can expand your reach by sponsoring or advertising with Soul Wisdom Radio. Hi, I'm Steve Kramer of Spirit Fire Radio, and I believe that meditation changes everything. It leads us in the direction of greater well-being, and that's a fact. I struggled with meditation for years. I understood the principles, but I found it hard to incorporate them into my everyday life. Spirit Fire's meditation practice changed that. It's called the Practice of Living Awareness, and it's taught in 14 steps. These are 14 tools that I can use in any moment on and off the cushion. Steps like smile, flow, and ground of being support my clarity of mind while I'm navigating the ups and downs of modern life. That's why it's called the Practice of Living Awareness. If you'd like to add meditation to your daily experience, the Practice of Living Awareness is free, online, and it's suited for any level of practitioner. Visit spiritfire.com for more information. And be sure to check out Spirit Fire's meditation retreats in Western Massachusetts. It's all there at spiritfire.com. Do you know how powerful your thoughts and beliefs are in determining your experience of your life? Is it really true that simply by changing some of the words you use in your day-to-day -day language, that you can change your life? I'm Megan Edge. Join me on Playing on the Edge Radical Change with Ease with my co-host, Dr. Pat, 
on Transformation Talk Radio. I look forward to seeing you there. To find out more about Megan Edge, visit her website at meganedge.ca. Tune in to Mainstream Metaphysics Radio to harness your connection with the universe to affect change for optimal success and happiness. Name one of the country's top psychics, Eve now brings her insights and gifts to this weekly hit call-in show, joined by visionaries, leaders, and gifted others, but mostly you. Jot it down, Thursdays, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Darcy Pariso is joining me here today. Now, listen, if you want to find out more about Darcy, you can go to DarcyPariso.com. And we're excited to say that pretty soon you'll see a brand new website for her. Love, love, love what's being created there. Um, Also, there are classes, events, and we'll make sure we're telling you about what they are. Um, I know Darcy's got a two-part class coming up here which she's going to tell you about to, uh, today as well. And then some special readings, animals, mediumship, all of the above. So if you want to find out more, go to DarcyPariso.com for sure. Or on Facebook, there's a Facebook page, Angels and Animals. I love that. Um, go ahead and do that. And then we'll make sure you know how to get a hold of Darcy because we can all use a little help and direction um darcy's also going to be doing a radio series and show with us you're going to be hearing more about that because it's all about animal soul wisdom and yeah stay tuned for that darcy thank you so much for today this is kind of exciting you know to be able to talk with you and share your journey with our listeners Oh, you know, thank you for having me. I'm I'm so happy to share these messages. And, you know, St. Francis is coming in and wow. he wants, um, you know, I hesitated about bringing this up, actually, because I wanted to be really positive. But he wanted he wants me to share that um, my commitment to this stems from him showing me just lifetimes and lifetimes of animal abuse and specifically wow. with horses. And mm. I asked him, I said, why did I have to see so much of this? Because, you know, it was pretty horrific. And he said, because you need to tell people who they are and we work as a team and, you know, you're living there and you committed to do this. And they urged me, both Archangel Gabriel and St. Francis, to go to London to study mediumship at Arthur Finley College. So on my very first day, I signed up for my classes and instructor and it was a mediumship, you know, school. And I started channeling animal messages Wow. And laughed. I felt set up again. I said, okay, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> and the 20 or so people in my class, um, the majority of them were practicing both mediumship and animal communication. So we all got that memo. <laughs> <laughs> but um, anyway, then they had me, um, I was guided to study and take more classes. And soon I was giving readings at fairs. I was on um, Martha Norwalk's Animal World on KKW for the past yeah. three years here in Seattle. Yeah. Because she got a message from St. Francis that we were to work together. And then I was asked to write um, a monthly column. And that came through Spirit and through my my helping team also to share stories about animals and teaching classes and managing energy and so forth. Because they've taught me so much. My whole life has changed. My heart's expanded. And what I really, really love is that people tell me, you know, I... I always remember the stories that you've told in the classes or you've told me in a reading and I, I pass them on. I tell everyone, I tell all my friends and that's what it is, you know, pass those on. Yeah. This is part of why we have this incredible medium, you know, this incredible thing that we call radio. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as we are sitting here and, you know, you and I are talking about this The message is powerful for several reasons, and I want to ask you about it. You know, sometimes our animal friends communicate with us, and it's just hilarious. 
And we don't realize that even though it's kind of funny and maybe there are funny stories around it, there's powerful, powerful messages in it. And, you know, this is how you help people understand how to connect the dots sometimes between life events, you know, what messages our animal friends bring to the forefront, but it, it, it isn't always delivered the way we think. We don't think about humor as a way that our animals are trying to communicate with us, but certainly you have that experience. And it's funny because I think they come in in the ways that relate best to you. And I love music, so I often get songs. So this morning I was meditating, and all of a sudden it was like, bink, bink, bink. You know, there was my father, my brother, all my family on the other side, and then a whole host of animals. And they're sending me these songs. And um, and I started laughing, and it was their way of saying, they were songs of support, and they were funny songs, and be boppy, and they were all over the <laughs> board, a whole bunch of them. So um, they do that. And it's funny because if I travel sometimes, um, they go with me. So I have I have one dog right now, but for quite a while I've had two dogs and a cat. And I've been down in Mount Chasta with friends, and suddenly my King Charles Spaniel is hanging over my head going, ooh, that dinner looks so good. It looks so tasty. And, and making commentaries on that whole trip, and it made it really fun. And once he start, you know, started this and kind of opened that door, um, my my other friends their animals all started coming in and pretty soon we had you know cats and dogs and everybody talking and it made it so fun and magical well Once- and you know isn't this really part of it you know they really call for us to just stop for a minute and pay attention right right and, you know, we think that they don't really know what's going on, or <laughs> maybe some of us do. Um, I have to tell you a funny thing is years ago I was in a, devel- a, excuse me, a, a development circle, and we were going to practice um, psychometry where you hold an object and, and read the energy and, and maybe who it belongs to and whatever. So as I was leaving the house, I, you know, I wondered what shall I bring, and I glanced down and there were some um, little toys, little dog toys. So I grabbed a... Um, Ziploc bag and put two dog toys and a cat toy and my cat was nowhere around my dogs were in the backyard and I thought well they're not playing with these anyway they won't even miss them so Mm. I said goodbye to them quickly I'm in my group meditating and all of a sudden it was like ping 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 the two dogs and the cat are in front of me and they said what are you doing (laughs) and I said I'm meditating why are you here (laughs) and they said you took our toys and we want to know what you're doing with them and I just about died laughing you know, I didn't, I didn't think that, but they know everything, I swear. <laughs> yeah, they do, really. I mean, you know, I, I had a colleague for 13 years, and from the day that I got him, you know, physically he had challenges. And, you know, I remember at one point, you know, so many challenges. I, I, lived, um, I lived literally about a block from a, a vet. And this was in New Jersey. And I thought, okay, there had to be a reason that we moved there. And the reason I know now know is that I was in that vet, vet, vet's office at least twice a month with, with the Travis, the dog. And, you know, sometimes those things magically happen. But I remember being asked by the people that, you know, really sold the dog to me, sold him uh, to me and saying them saying, OK, yeah, if you're having all these problems, just just bring him back. We'll give you another another puppy. And I thought, I know what the the the, the, the I know what they're going to do. And I remember being on the phone with the folks and I I just remember this little puppy just crept right up on my feet and I knew in that moment there's no way I would give I would give him back because I know what they would do and we were together for 13 years and yes I did end up buying a new Mercedes and a new building for my vet that lived down the street that's clear But what I learned about love and caring and healing, I I don't think I would have learned it any other way. Isn't uh, isn't it sometimes that we are meant to learn these kinds of things, not from reading a book or taking a class, but from actually experience what it may feel like? Aren't they such gentle teachers? 
They really are. And that's their language. Their language is love. That's what they're here to teach us. Mm. They, you know, they want us to, to know who they are and to really see them and to see them as, you know, a soul and what they bring to the table. And they do so much more for us than we can possibly even imagine. Mm -hmm. I mean, they heal us, they comfort us, they take on our illnesses, they create problems where they are in trouble and could possibly even be rehomed um, to bring things to light for their person. I mean, they're really very, very, you know, I think they're like next to the angels or next yeah, to God or, or right up there with them. I don't know, but of course. Yeah, of course. And you know, it's funny. It doesn't matter what we say to people. Like I remember one time we had a, a picnic in our backyard and barbecue and everything. And, you know, and we circled up for a moment just to say a few words, thank the universe. And I said to everyone, I said, listen, you know, just make sure you're pushing your food far enough away uh, in, the, in the table. I said, you know, Travis is not going to jump up there. That's not what he does. But, you know, he has pretty good reach. So this is a full grown collie, right? Look mm -hmm. just like Lassie. Okay. The size of their snout, right? They're not like normal dogs. They've got this eight inch snout, right? And by the time we were done and people went back, almost half of everybody's hamburger that was on the plate was literally gone. Absolutely <laughs> just wiped off the plate. Um, and this beautiful lassie like dog was simply sitting there just looking at us like, what's the problem here? <laughs> it's like, what's the problem here? And, you know, I have so many of those examples and stories of things that, you know, we can't really replace uh, with any sort of logic. But love is beautiful, right? You know, it that is. is what they teach us. Mm -hmm. And love heals. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to ask you this question when we come back. Um, and for those of you out there, it, you know, we'd love to hear, you know, your stories. Do you have any do you have any fun stories that you'd like to share with us? Uh, I think that would be cool to have people do that. Right, Darcy? Oh, I would. And, you know, this morning, it's funny, Dr. Pat, you mentioned this because this morning, well, last night and then again this morning, I heard, you know, you need to tell some funny stories about us because we're pretty funny. Yeah. And so, you know, I have a few of my own, but I'd love to hear what listeners have to say. And I'd like to offer, you know, maybe a half price reading, share a story and get a discounted reading for the month of February. Wow. Yeah, so uh, let me give out the phone number for those of you that want to share a story. Um, 1-800-930-2819. 1-800-930-2819. Yeah, you got a funny story. And what a, what a wonderful gift, Darcy. Thank you so much. Uh, when we come back, we're going to be talking about animals. Um, how are they our caretakers and healers? And what is it that Darcy does so beautifully? So when she says, yeah. For those of you that call in with the story, we're going to give you half off of a, of a session. What does that mean? Stay tuned when we come back. That and much more. Love to hear your stories. We'll be right back. If you're dealing with fear and anxiety, you've probably noticed that the more you fight these emotions, the stronger they seem to get. Dr. Friedemann Schaub, the author of The Fear and Anxiety Solution, explains that instead of suppressing, we need to identify and resolve the deeper, subconscious root causes of fear and anxiety. His personal breakthrough program has helped thousands worldwide to overcome their emotional challenges. To learn more, visit thefearandanxietysolution.com and schedule your free consultation with Dr. Schaub now. Defining success and putting minds to work. With the Higher Learners Career and Leadership Series, Rudy Racine will help you craft your personal definition of success, offering support and guidance as you move forward towards your goals. Take the leap. With the right mix of focus and motivation, anything can be achieved. Tune in every first and third Monday at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 Eastern. And for more information on Rudy Racine and Higher Learners, visit Rudy's site at higherlearners.com. That's H-I-R-E learners.com. To see your life from an angel's perspective, book a personal consultation with Claire Candy Hoff, angelic walk-in angel Ariel at Angel Healing House. K 
Candy provides intuitive counseling, Reiki, and angel readings in person in Los Angeles or nationally and internationally via phone or Skype. She will channel the practical tools you need to transform your life. Call now, 831-277-3716 or visit angelhealinghouse.com. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. To find answers to life's questions, you need to look within yourself. Dr. Glenna Rice brings your questionable conversations on Transformation Talk Radio each month. Tune in each month for insight into how you can live up to your full potential. Dr. Glenna is a physical therapist, certified access consciousness, and access body class facilitator. How does it get any better than this? For more information on Dr. Glenna Rice and her work, visit GlennaRice.com. Are you ready to make deep, lasting, transformative changes? Then tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio for Susanna Jameson's hit show, Love Light Sound Radio. During her show, Susanna inspires and supports spiritually and health-conscious individuals all over the world to reconnect with their heart, their inner peace, and balance. Love Light Sound Radio. Transformation happens here now. For more information, visit SusannaJameson.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome back. Must thank Sally. Yep, indeed. Got any horse lovers out there? Totally do. I am so thrilled to have Darcy joining us here today, Darcy Pariso. For those of you out there, go to the website, Darcy, D-A-R-C-Y, Pariso, P-A-R-I-S-O, dot com. Um, Darcy, before we uh, get back to talking about our animal friends and healing, um, you have some upcoming classes uh people can schedule time with you and get a session can you tell us a little bit about that um yes i have a class i've been working with horses quite a bit um up here in snohomish county and so stacy lewis is a life coach and we're working together with her equine training and animal communication we're putting the class on we're developing um all the particulars about it. It's going to be on April 21st on a Saturday from like 10 until 5. Um, the second day will probably be two weeks later. And we're putting that together. But we'll work with communication, um, how animals reflect back to us, you know, things that we might be doing. We're going to work with energy. Um, this one particular horse has been really teaching us different ways to work with energy. And it's been really cool. And everyone's been feeling it. So there will be that. And then in June... Um, I'll be at the BECU fair in Kent and that's on June 23rd. It's on a Saturday also. Um, so come down, I'll be doing readings and there are more things coming up. So, um, also I was going to offer, um, well, now we have a couple of offers, but I was going to offer, um, $20 off a reading for anyone that booked it for the first four people that contacted me and booked it in February. So awesome. if that's something you're interested in, just go to my website and go to the um, contact tab at the top of the page. Awesome. Um, well, thank you so much for being so generous. I mean, it's really been a cornerstone for our show from day one. Um, and anybody, uh, as I said before, if you all have a really fun animal story and you want to share it, anybody that calls in, we'll get your information as well and Darcy would love to gift you uh, half off on your reading. So 1-800-930-2819. Really important conversation is this one here that I discovered, and that is that animals are our caretakers and healers. And I know we've heard numerous stories about that, but it's hard sometimes to realize it when you're in the middle of it. But it's so true, isn't it? It really is. And it's a a main theme in my work. You know, people Mm. 
tell me things and things just come up in readings. We don't know where we're going. We open the door. We might have loved ones come in. We might have animals that have crossed over, you know, from the other side that come in and help with healing. Um, guides and angels might come in. It's just really all over. Um, a physical example of that is I was doing a reading with a woman at a fair and this dog, among other things, said, I changed her life. And then he showed me images of him nudging her side over and over. And she just stopped and her face turned white. And she said, you know, he had been doing that for a while. And this one day it was just so urgent. He just would not stop. He would not stop. And she just got the feeling that I need to get to the doctors immediately. And what she found was her appendix was about to burst. Wow. And he, he did. He literally saved her life. And they're always scanning our energy. They're checking our bodies, you know, um, our emotions. They're always keeping tabs on us. Mm -hmm. And the thing about... How do they know, Darcy? I mean, it's always baffling to me how often we hear that story, right? But they just know, don't they? You know, they live... um, I feel like they live closer to the other side than we do. They can see energy, Mm -hmm. Um, people often tell me, you know, my dog's always staring. What is he looking at? Or my, my dog or cat have, you know, told me that, you know, who's visiting or what they see, but they see things that we don't, they see Mm -hmm. our energy. They see maybe colors. They see our aura. Um, if it's, you know, are we cloudy? Are we bright? Are we stressed? And they don't have to look at our thoughts or anything else. It's just a quick energy scan and Um, you know, she looks tired or there's something exciting going on here or, um, are they, they see an illness. They, they're just, as I look at energy and I'm drawn to a certain area of the body and there's maybe something dark, Mm -hmm. um, something that's out of alignment or something that needs to shift. And I ask, what do I do with this? Um, that's, I'm seeing that often through animals eyes. And I say that now because I just know it because it's that easy for them. Yeah. You know what I love about this is part of this is they truly do show up in that way. They truly do show up in that way. But one of the things that we don't necessarily have the skill is how to know that they're showing up in that way. Um, But there are people in various professions, right, Uh, whether they're chiropractors or, or doctors or energy workers or, you know, the massage healers, um, you know, people can say that they feel the animals healing and, you know, or can feel the energy of that. And so this is part of also learning how to do that. Um, Yes. And this is a really common story with cats. Um, All the people that you mentioned and lots of clients tell me that their cats will show up for the healing session. They'll mm. either lay on the floor under their massage table or even on top. And one client says that um, she's got, you know, her, her cat doesn't care for people generally, but there are four clients that when they show up, regardless of appointment changes or day or time changes, whatever, that cat is there. And I can tell you from experience that that's happened to me. I've been on an acupuncture table where the practitioner brought her two Russian blue cats to work because they helped in the healing session. And when it happened to me, I was communicating with them silently. And I suddenly I felt this wonderful energy coursing through my body. um, And I was literally glued to the table. I couldn't move. Mm. But it was fine because it felt wonderful. (laughs) Wow. You know, many of us have been able to look at animals, how they heal, what the relationship is. And we're not just talking about physical healing. You know, I know for me, um, I had a, a transformative experience in the desert with a lizard and a rattlesnake family. And, you know, I'm a girl from New York. So even saying had a transformative experience in the desert, it's just a little bit odd some days I think about that. Um, but, you know, I know you must have had time where animals work to heal you, right? Yes, many times. And this horse I've been working with in Snohomish, Ella, um, we have been releasing a lot of grief from past lives. And the thing that I didn't know is that when she asked me to come up and work with her, um, she woke me up at four in the morning and showed me all these wonderful lives we had. And so I'm driving up there thinking, oh, this is just really great. And then she said, now, 
next, we're going to go to the core of the issues and we're going to heal you to your core. And she did. I, you know, I could hardly be peeled off the ground in that arena after about an hour and a half of, of her healing me. But, and all this grief came up from lifetimes and lifetimes. And what surprised to me was just even recently was that she was in those lives and she was going through the same healing and she was just as, um, worn out as I was. Mm. And I didn't think about that side of it, about how it impacts them because mostly what I see is that they're a conduit and they're helping us. They're like another, um, loving, beautiful gift and resource. Um, so I didn't see that this, this side that this would impact her this way. But having said that, Animals take on our things all the time and it impacts them physically. And I find that cats are better at taking things on and kind of kicking it out. Mm-hmm. Um, dogs, there's more dogs with cancer than ever before because they've yeah. stepped up into their healing roles and yeah. they're not quite as adept at, you know, getting rid of it yet. Mm-hmm. Not not everyone, but I think it's getting better. Yeah. So we I have to tell them, you know, Thank you for helping me once right. you identify it. But right. your job is to let that go and be a you know role model of good health or encourage me to eat better, or exercise more, whatever <laughs> that might be for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, part of this, too, is um, and I think I said this to you when I mean that that experience for me in the desert was transformative. What that means uh, for me, Darcy, is that, you know, I had several experience while out there on this vision quest. And not only did my life change, but my relationships change. And they change the way we feel, the way we see, the way we believe, the things we do in life. And for me, you know, that experience out there with um, the, these uh, rattlesnakes and, and a lizard that I didn't know I was building my medicine wheel around a giant piece of driftwood And that's kind of where they lived. I didn't know that at the time. But, you know, things, they can't go back. You can't go back. And that experience for me directed me in a way where I knew I was never going to go back to corporate America again. For whatever reason, whatever whatever I learned on that trip, that was not going to be the career path that I had up to that point had spent, you know, close to um, eight years in school so that I could go back to that big, fat, paying corporate job. But I couldn't go back. Does that happen to people? And if it does happen, you know, I didn't have a Darcy that I could call and get help. But sometimes we do need help with this. I think, Dr. Pat, it happens a lot. And I think you get the clients that resonate best with you or that spirit puts you together. Mm -hmm. And so I tend to have, you know, a fair amount of clients like that. And one of the things that I'm really passionate about is like holding up the mirror to people. And I'm doing that on behalf of, you know, their guides and their animals. So animals will often um, bring in what we'd consider a bad behavior to, you know, give us a wake up call or a call to action. And it can be something as simple as um, recently I talked to a dog who had been peeing in the house for quite a long time. And what I learned by talking to him and, you know, scanning his energy that he was grieving. And so the, it was the loss of a daughter who had moved out some time ago. Mm. So of course, looking deeper at that, the caller was also holding some grief in that same area of her body. So he was, he had been trying to take on her emotions. That's how he was helping. Mm. And he also really, you know, that was one part of it. But the other part, and even, well, equally as important, was that he wanted her to live her life purpose, that she was highly intuitive, and she had so much to offer the world. And she had been thinking about it, you know, and kind of jump starting and which way to go. And he was just kind of giving her that shove, do it, you know who you are, see yourself as a soul. And when we went back to like the situation, she said, I got it, I know exactly what to do, I'm on it. And already, you know, she was empowered. Mm. Wow. You know, there, there is this journey we go on. And for you, you have such a deep toolkit. 
And I'm going to go ahead and skip the break because I want to talk about, you know, what you what you've done to build up your toolkit, your tools, your techniques, right? And many folks don't know um, or may not know how do I work with someone that uh, like Darcy? How does that look? And for you, you've been doing it so many years. You've seen so many experiences. You've seen so many healings. You've seen so much shared by our animal friends that have pointed people in the right direction to do things that could literally save them emotionally and physically. And I'd love to know a little bit more, and I'd love for you to talk about how you develop this tool- toolkit and, and what some of these techniques are. Okay. Um, like I said, starting out was first you came in with Reiki mm-hmm. and, um, I don't know if I could say what percentage. Uh If it's appropriate, there will be, um, you know, some souls from the other side might come in, some guides might come in. And I'm, I really go with what I'm guided to do. I'll ask questions. Um, you know, what do you need? Um, you know, clients may send me questions and say, you know, I'd like to know about this thing or that thing. How is he feeling? Is he ready to cross over? Why is he doing this? Can you tell me, um, can you help me to find a new home for him? And what, what does that look like? And so there's, there's some of that with questions and we'll go through that, but I have to say that I think almost always there are spiritual messages, there's guides or angels or family, whatever coming in to have the person look at things. And if it's something that's physical, it often, you know, goes through maybe the whole family or through that person and their animal that they're tied to. Sometimes there's a whole house full of animals that are, acting out that have different things going on. And so it's, you know, kind of breaking that down, um, asking questions, scanning energy, looking at where they're holding things. And lots of times it's an old story and it's something that maybe the person has forgotten about. It might be um, some old pain or grief or, you know, feelings of anxiety or whatever that might be. And it's just maybe been there for a long time and it might even be, um, if I can say low grade, but you yeah. know, stuff back, stuff way back. And suddenly a dad comes in and, and brings up something or the animal comes in and shows, um, things that they're carrying in their body. So, um, I am a certified, um, spiritual teacher. I took, um, quite a bit of training. And so I have kind of a tool chest of, of things And we might go into, um, you know, clearing chakras. It's just like whenever I'm guided to. That's right. Um, You know, looking at their aura, bringing in some colors for color healing is something I've been working Mm. with more. Um, And I have a lot of, um, like, kind of activations that we do to clear things. And they're working with, um, you know, the higher dimensions, the angels and the guides. Um, And it might be uh, whatever area might be coming up. It could be... um, to raise your vibration, to Mm -hmm. help you to stay in that higher frequency and to see who you are. It might be, you know, maybe there's a piece of something in you that has fragmented off and we want to go and look for that and ask if it's ready to come back and what we need to do to clear that out of your body, release it so that you can bring it back and be fully in your, you know, be empowered and be fully in your strength and in your power. Mm -hmm. Mm. So there's, we kind of go all over the board, whatever comes up for you. It's very individualized for certainly. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, that's what we're learning today about medicine in general, right? Um, you, you know, I've gotten to work with a number of people, um, over the time I've been doing this and one, and I got to interview Dr. Darvish. She and I are both, uh, celebrating 15 years, right? And, uh, we got to talk a little bit and talk about how important it is to be able to have the kind of toolkit that you have, the depth and the breadth of it, because you don't, you don't know what's going to show up, right? You just don't don't. know. Yeah. (laughs) Sometimes I start a reading and I say, wow, I wonder what we're going to do with this or where we're going to go with this, because it'll be like the, all these different things that my brain couldn't possibly interpret or tell me what's going to (laughs) happen. I know. I know. And, you know, isn't it too that, you know, sometimes it's the least likely of, of animal friends. You know, when I lived at Green Lake, um, you know, 
I didn't have a I didn't have an animal friend at the time, and I'm not really and ne- never had been up to that point, you know, somebody that would see a like a cat or a kitten and say, oh, hello, little kitty. That wouldn't be me, right? Um, and so moved into this house on Green Lake, and it was really clear that um, as I was renting, I couldn't own uh, an animal friend. You know, that was part of the, the rules. So what happened was the entire time I lived there was that there was a, a, a cat that lived two doors down. And this cat, black cat, her name was Felicia. And for whatever reason, honestly, Darcy, she was more like a dog than a cat. And I was studying and writing my dissertation and going to school and flying to California and doing all of that. And this cat somehow started to just show up on my doorstep and she would, and I pull up in the car and she would come to the car and like meow like crazy. And after a while, you know, I would let her in during the day and I didn't know much about her. But what I found out later was the owners down the street never let her in the house. She, they had like five dogs and she slept in the garage on a, on a beat up old car uh, 24-7. Winter, summer, it didn't matter. And they didn't really feed her. So I ended up really she adopted me and sat next to me right on the desk next to the computer for the years that I lived there, and I would let her go home every nighttime, but she would come in and she would simply sit there while I worked on this dissertation. And I got to tell you, I really believe that I would not have finished it, and I certainly wouldn't have finished it the way that I did had it not been for her. And, and I wanted to just share that because I know that your vision is to empower people and help them as part of this. And I'm so looking forward to, you know, the many shows that we'll do together. But I know you hear stories like that all the time, right? I do hear those often. And that's a beautiful story. And that's who they are. That's who they are. And you know, the healing, um, sometimes it's only a conversation that can be enough to release things or start that process of releasing any trauma or any memories for both people and animals. Mm -hmm. So it's like being with your girlfriend and sharing something that happened to you and, and, you know, trusting that you're safe. Yeah, boy, I'll tell you, I know to this day and, you know, part of this too is knowing that these, these precious, precious creatures help us open our hearts. Thank you, Darcy. Thank you so much for today. We're going to have so much fun You know, we're going to be doing a radio series with Darcy. We're going to be doing live on air readings, all of the above. Thank you so much for today. Again, please let folks know how they can find out more about you. And I'd love to ask you your personal message. What would you like to leave us with today? And thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. I'm so happy to be here. Um, My message is that um, when you look into your animal's eyes, if you can just kind of expand that and feel them and see who they are and start looking at how they're helping you and just anything that you get, even if it sounds crazy, you know, just accept it because they are totally there for you and they're all about love and they will do anything they can to help you to get your attention and to help you with your growth. That's what they're here for. Oh my gosh. Um, People can contact me at just um, Mm darcyparisocom www dot darcyparisocom it's d-a-r-c-y spelled like paris with an o (laughs) p-a-r-i-s-o and just go to my website and they'll find out you know any future events and and anything else that they might be interested in knowing yeah and if you'd like send me those funny stories yes (laughs) yes please do and you know by the way we're going to be talking a lot more with darcy and we'll let you know uh how we're going to be able to connect with all of you for sure And um, I love what you're doing, Darcy. And thank you so much for all you do in the world. Oh, thank you, Dr. Pat. Oh, man. I want to thank all of you for tuning us in and turning us on. And thank you, Mr. Benny, for, uh, how should I say it, pushing all our right buttons. 
And remember for all of you out there, you know, these animals are showing up in your life for a very special reason. Even if you cannot take a moment to thank them personally, think great thoughts because that's what they're doing for all of you. We'll see you next time. Audio was via a Skype call.